A big fat F. The company full of complaints and the solutions aid on your side found for business owners getting stuck with an unnecessary bill. And focusing on accountability, reports of emails linked to the embassy attack in Libya and the emotional response from Hillary Clinton about that investigation. Plus, wasteful spending. I poured over the latest report from a state think tank. The more than a dozen cases of politicians and government workers enriching themselves. Now, Nevada's first choice for news. This is Channel 8 News Now at 4.30. And thanks for staying with us. Inside these pages, there is enough government waste to choke a horse. <laughs> it is the Nevada Policy Research Institute. They call it the Piglet Book, and it lists case after case of government agencies in Nevada who are wasting our tax dollars. Included in this report, more than a dozen cases of documented in uh, government audits, everything from politicians who are lining their pockets to firefighters and government workers who are double dipping and in some cases double crossing the public trust. In many cases, they are stories already revealed by our I-team, like North Las Vegas firefighters racking up hefty paychecks and draining the city budget by abusing sick time and overtime. And Clark County firefighters, an arbitrator confirmed they systematically coordinated sick days to get more overtime. In one case, a firefighter took 48 days sick leave, although he never took more than four days in a row. That way he avoided having to prove he was ill and still made $232,000 a year. NPRA's Piglet Book also details how Las Vegas City employees freely use city-issued gas cards to purchase fuel on weekends and holidays and late at night when they're not doing city work. And also, a lot of employees were purchasing more gas than their assigned city vehicle could hold. For instance, uh, there was one employee who purchased about 69 gallons for his uh, city-issued pickup truck, uh, which had a tank capacity of about 16 gallons. And that was widespread. According to this report, more than 200 times, Las Vegas City workers use city-issued credit cards to make multiple fuel purchases on the same day. We reached out to the city today, and this is their response. The report, they say, is referring to two audits by the city auditor that were completed in September and December 2010. The issues in the audits have been addressed to ensure these types of incidents don't occur again. Now, what's so frustrating is that we see the same type of waste and abuse every year from different government agencies. And the author of this report says you'd think these government agencies would learn to put policies in place to guard against it. Denise? You would think so. Well, as we reported at the top of the hour, a 28-year-old man from Tunisia is in custody. In connection with the attack on the U.S. consulate in Libya, his name is Ali Harzai. Really, no further details were given. Ambassador Chris Stevens, three other Americans, including one who lived in Henderson, died in the attack on the U.S. diplomatic post in the capital of Benghazi. That was on September 11th. While neither presidential candidate or the White House is addressing that arrest, the State Department is responding to reports about emails related to the attack. In her own words, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton says, quote, we are holding ourselves accountable, end quote. The first email was sent while the attack was underway and then one a few hours later. They said a militia group claimed responsibility both on Facebook and then on Twitter, and then they denied it the next day. Secretary Clinton criticized them. Look, I, I've said it, and I'll say it one more time. Uh, no one wants to find out what happened more than I do. We are holding ourselves accountable uh, to the American people. You know, posting something on Facebook uh, is not, in and of itself, evidence. Uh, and I think it just underscores how fluid the reporting uh, was at the time and continued for some time to be. Uh, what I keep in mind is that four brave Americans were killed, and we will find out what happened. At least one White House official who does not want to be named says there are always conflicting reports following an attack, and that's why they have these lengthy investigations. A Metro officer involved in an accident this afternoon. Kent Smith is in Chop Parade over Nellis, just south of Las Vegas Boulevard. Kent? Yeah, we just had confirmation from the folks over at Metro that the officer has been transported off to University Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. So I want to start off telling everybody that, which is definitely uh, good news. Uh, the accident here involving a Metro motorcycle officer down here. This is on the southbound side of Nellis Boulevard, about a quarter mile south of, ne uh, or rather southbound Nellis Boulevard, rather, just south of Las Vegas Boulevard. And you can see some of the damage there. It appears that possibly uh, that vehicle there and the uh, motorcycle got together right there in that back corner. You can see some of the damage in the bumper off of the vehicle. 
Obviously, Metro is going to be doing a thorough investigation down there. Southbound traffic here on Nellis, south of the boulevard, is going to have to stay to the right to get by. Northbound traffic, the left hand lane is also shut down. And here's earlier video we shot from Chop Parade. You can see the slow escort, obviously not non-life-threatening injuries there as they were moving relatively slow there as they're making their journey towards the University Medical Center. As we get more details on this developing story, we'll make sure to pass it along. Once again, Metro officer had some minor to moderate injuries here this afternoon down here with this accident at Nellis in Las Vegas Boulevard. Reporting live in the northeast side of the valley, I'm Ken Smith, 8 News Now. Glad to hear it's not serious, Ken. The United Way is celebrating its recent success in the community. The community in blue was a way for the United Way to recognize inspirational people people, businesses, and community organizations that help make a difference. And 8 News Now is a proud supporter. Today, the United Way also talked about its goals to help Las Vegans in the next year. Their number one mission is to get more high schoolers to graduate high school on time. They do great work all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, moving to the exit, the problem drivers are having at the end of the express lanes on I-15 as Brian Loftus sorts through what's driving you crazy. And everyday hero, the military man without a real medical background, we're now honoring and the action he took to save a life aboard an airliner. Beat the Traffic is brought to you by attorney Edward M. Bernstein. A neighborhood plagued with violence. The presidential visit that could help change that community. And how cops are using residents to help crack down on crime. Then, her acts of kindness inspired another. At five, the big surprise one Valley man is giving to her cause. A viewer claims there's not enough room from the end of the express lanes over to the Sahara exit. Traffic anchor Brian Loftus shares the response from NDOT engineers. And today's What's Driving You Crazy. <laughs> question comes in 15 north there's a short distance from the end of the express lanes on the left over to the Sahara exit on the right if this distance were to be increased there'd be more time for cars to exit the express lanes and move over to exit Sahara safely Reverend Miller continue that drivers need to illegally cross the double lines to allow enough time to move all the way to the right lane to exit at Sahara he feels an earlier exit from the express lanes would result in fewer accidents at the Bermuda Triangle of traffic as Ken calls it I checked in with NDOT safety engineer and they tell me NDOT did recently lengthen the distance from the end of the express lanes to the exit ramps at both ends now, Reverend, I did pitch your idea, and I'm told shortening the express lanes further would reduce its effectiveness. Also, accident stats show most crashes are happening slightly north of the exit between Sahara and Charleston. NDOT doesn't think the weave to get to the Sahara off-ramp is a factor. It will not be lengthened any more than it already has been. I did try, though. What's driving you crazy? Send the email to traffic8 at 8newsnow.com. And remember that every weekday on 8 News Now this morning, Brian keeps an eye on the roads for you to get you where you need to be on time. It opened a couple of weeks ago, but today was the official grand opening for the Southern Nevada Health District's new public health center. This one is located in North Las Vegas in the area of Craig and Revere. The center offers childhood immunization immunizations, school vaccinations, and a food safety training kiosk for health card applicants. Oh, for North Las Vegas, it's wonderful. Um, we lost our clinic uh, previously in April of 2010, so we haven't had a clinic in the city of North Las Vegas um, for over two years. So to be able to provide these services locally, uh, easily accessible to the residents of North Las Vegas is just absolutely critical for our city. The North Las Vegas facility is one of seven health district service sites operated by the Southern Nevada District in Clark County. Ooh, don't want to see that needle go in there. No fun, no. is it? Uh, quite the journey, like something out of the movies. The message in a bottle that traveled for years and the unexpected reward for finding it. And honoring a hero, the step a military man took to save a life and the risks he was up against in the process. Medical Breakthroughs on 8 News Now is brought to you by Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada. He was flying home to Nevada when he heard the flight attendant call out over the intercom, is there a doctor on board? But no one responded. That's when O.K. Hubble, who's not a doctor and had never even administered CPR before, decided to try and help. A woman in her mid-60s had collapsed in the aisle of United Flight 418. And Staff Sergeant O.K. Hubble, whose job it is to train security forces at Nellis, was coming home from leave, sitting in the very back row with his wife and two kids. Once they asked for the doctor, I was looking around, no one moved. I looked at my wife and I was like, hey, I'm going to help. 
And she's like, okay, that's cool. Hubble had some emergency medical training for his Air Force job, but never had the occasion to use it until now. He was standing over an unconscious passenger who was bleeding in the aisle of a jam-packed airliner. There, there wasn't a lot of blood. It wasn't a deep gash where it needed stitches, but it was big enough where you had to stop the bleeding. He noticed people all around him watching, some praying that the woman wouldn't die right there on the plane. There were people asking, is she going to be all right? What's wrong with her? Shallow breathing. She needed oxygen. So I asked the flight attendant, can we get the oxygen tank? They brought it out. They got everything to me, first aid kit, everything. Through it all, Hubble kept his cool, stabilized the passenger, and stayed with her, comforting her until they landed. It's something that the military does for you, is it teaches you to react. I have no regrets, and realistically, I would do it at any point. The woman was two days to properly thank him, but now we'd like to thank him, Staff Sergeant O.K. Hubble, an 8 News Now Everyday Hero. Good guy to have in a tight yeah. spot. Denise, it was our privilege to honor so many Red Cross Everyday Heroes. We couldn't have done it without our community pride partners, Envy Energy and Finley Automotive. So many people who just jump into action, don't even think twice about really it. Really respect that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, for sure. Me too. Let's get a uh, check on our forecast right now. Darren, it, it feels like fall outside. It's Does nice. it get any better than this? Yeah. Really? I mean, it's absolutely uh, beautiful outside and nice and cool. Uh, we had forecast a couple of cold fronts to move through the area to really cool us down. In fact, today, highs only hovering in the upper 60s and lower 70s. So there's a, a nice pretty look at the uh, view from our Caesars camp. You can see the blue sky out there. Now this cold front uh, cooled down a good part of the U.S. Take a look at some of these current temperatures. Seattle at 50 degrees, now up towards Bismarck in the upper 30s. Uh, Castor, Wyoming below the freezing mark at 31. You head out towards Denver at 45. Now the cold front is moving farther away and that means at least for right now the winds have relaxed but they will pick up again uh, tomorrow and in through Friday, especially down near the river uh, down near Laughlin. So you can see as far as the rest of the country out ahead of the cold front it's nice and warm. 74 in Chicago, uh, upper 70s for New Orleans, down towards uh, Dallas at 82. And then you head all the way up towards the northeast, Boston, a little bit cooler, the current temperature at 52 degrees. So there is the radar. We're not going to get any rain out of this cold front that's moved through the area now. Uh, you can see most of the moisture is all the way towards the north. Uh, some snow showers in the higher elevations uh, of the mountains there. You can see up towards California, uh, some scattered showers there and snow showers north of San Francisco, up towards the north there, uh, pick up some snow showers. So the wind cast in motion. Winds are light outside right now, but again, tomorrow you'll notice the winds begin to pick up in the afternoon down towards Laughlin, Searchlight, and then on Friday, we're going to have wind gusts up near 30 miles per hour, particularly down towards the lake. So again, I mentioned the last half hour, maybe as far as boating on Friday, might want to scratch that. It will be windy down towards the south. Temperature-wise outside, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, 71 degrees out at the airport. Look at all these lower 70s. Lake Mead at 73, as well as uh, East Flamingo. You can see East Washington at 72. Normal high is 78, so this is about 5 degrees cooler than normal. Head out towards Silverado Ranch, you're at 72. And then outside the valley, it's a lot cooler. Beatty at 63. Uh, Searchlight, you're at 67. And then look at Mount Charles, nice and cool at 43 degrees. So highs today kind of hovering in the mid to lower 70s. Uh, by tomorrow morning, again, pretty chill chilly out there. It'll be cool tonight with overnight lows dropping down into the upper 40s. Uh, forecast for tomorrow for Thursday. Another day like today. Perfect with a high of 70. That's still 70 degrees cooler than normal. And then there's a look at the 70 forecast. Look at Friday. Upper 60s. Then a ridge builds back in and we start to warm things up all of next week with highs in the upper 70s and lower 80s. A perfect forecast out there. Back to you guys for right now. Darren, thanks. And you'll be interested in this because you got a fast sports car. <laughs> you seen him in the parking lot? Yes, I have. Smooth. <laughs> the nation's fastest road is now open for drivers. The speed limit for the Texas toll road, 85 miles per hour. It's flying. The remaining uh, cones and closures along 41 miles of Highway 130, finally gone after three years of construction. Uh, the toll road is going to give drivers another option to travel between Austin and San Antonio. Uh, before, drivers had to take the nearly always crowded I-35, but this new highway is going to cost drivers about 15 cents per mile to use for this toll road. It's going to save them so much time. Darren's already on his way to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, flying in, yep. yeah. Uh, an accident creating some delays along I-15. Whoa, and Sahara, what a surprise. Ken Smith at Chopper Ken. 
Yeah, I don't think anybody's going 85 here along I-15 here at Sahara. <laughs> They're going a heck of a lot slower. Uh, we'll take a look here first, the accident, which uh, helped create some of this heavy delays here. This is right at the Sahara off-ramp from the northbound side of I-15. And because of that accident here, we got the big delays here that stretch way back here this afternoon. It has been just a tough one along the interstate. We've been plagued with multiple accidents up and down the interstates here this afternoon, including delays starting around Flamingo, and it continues solid. Just take a look at that. That is definitely one highway you want to avoid. And also earlier video we shot from Chopper 8, an accident involving a Metro motorcycle officer on the southbound side of Nellis Boulevard, just south of Las Vegas Boulevard. He was transported, the officer, to uh, University Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. Both directions are going to have the state of the right to get around the accident as Metro continues the investigation for just a bit longer. Reporting live here over I-15 at Sahara, I'm Ken Smith, 8 News Now. This is really cool. A message in a bottle finally found. It was drifting in the ocean for eight years. And it traveled from Quebec all the way to Ireland. I spent like about 15 minutes trying to open it because there's sand stuck in the lid. The nine-year-old boy found the message while out exploring the flooding aftermath in his small village on the south coast of Ireland. The note contained the names of the girls who had written it along with an email address. But the email was no longer active. So... He turned, a, turned to a Montreal newspaper for help, and luckily, the girls saw his story. I was so exciting and so surprised. I didn't think it was going to be so far. Tourism. Ireland also say uh, they're now giving the 20-year-olds a free trip to the Emerald Isle in the little village where their message was found. By the way, the women were just 12 years old when they wrote the note. Now they got a nice trip ahead of them. <laughs> That's good, fun. good story. Yeah. Uh, paying what you don't owe. The one company giving business owners a run for their money. Eight's on your side with the two things you can do. Starting with checking your mail to avoid being overcharged. And helping kids by helping parents. Just ahead at five, the innovative new program to put people back to work at one school. And the strip casino behind the movement. We have a warning for business owners this afternoon. In fact, hundreds are getting calls for services they simply didn't order. Uh, since the beginning of the month, more than 140 businesses have complained to Aid on Your Side and the Better Business Bureau about a company called U.S. Public Yellow Pages. Local business owners say they get a bill for $599, mm. but they have no idea what it's for. And when they call to get information, they find something suspicious. Andrea Valle with Artsy Nannies in Town Square says they provided her a cryptic recording of an employee agreeing to that sale. They asked her several questions that all she said was yes. There was no other conversation. When I asked them to play back the original conversation between her and the salesperson, they were unable to provide that. They said they don't record that. Um, and they only recorded her saying yes, that she agrees to this package. Andrea says her employee does not remember this call ever taking place. Growing even more suspicious, she looked up the company's website and found her business wasn't even included on the advertisements. She then asked U.S. Yellow Pages for a contract, but they couldn't provide one. Now, they did provide a generic invoice, but it didn't have the correct address. Now, the Better Business Bureau has given the company an F rating for failing to respond to complaints. Mm. As a result of all this, business owners should check every bill that comes in this month very closely, follow up on anything that might look suspicious. Michelle Mortensen personally reached out to U.S. Yellow Pages by phone and email. They did not return her calls. Especially when you're talking about $599. A lot of money. Big bill. A crowd starting to gather now, getting ready for a presidential visit. The unique location for the late night rally, that's right now at 5 o'clock. A community plagued by crime is in the national spotlight tonight. That first night, gunshots outside my bedroom window. The impressive turnaround in West Las Vegas as they prepare for a visit from the President of the United States. Fire roars through an abandoned bakery. The evidence found inside that may point to whoever started the fire. Plus, I worry that we won't, we probably won't have enough money to buy ourselves some food. Families in need. The Strip Casino stepping up to help parents at one school find jobs. Thanks for joining us. Supporters are looking forward to a late night visit from the president. He's holding a special nighttime rally with a big pop star yeah. performing. Doors open in just about an hour and with presidential race as close as it is, swing states like Nevada have never been more important. 8 News Now has live team coverage. We start with the I-Team's Nathan Baca. He's live at Doolittle Park where a line has already started forming. Nathan. 
Well, people lining up right now are going to have to get used to waiting for a few more hours. You can see that line right now, just part of the line. They get into Doolittle Park at 6, but the event does not begin until around 9. Pop singer Katy Perry will have a free concert before the president speaks. The Latin group, rock group Mana, played at the last Obama rally. They packed a park with 11,000 people. But the people we talked to trying to get last minute tickets were not interested in singers. They wanted to hear more about national issues. Health care. Um, education, glad he's getting everybody out of Iraq. Um, you know, it's not really a democratic issue. It's, it's kind of a Romney issue for me. I'm thrilled. It's like a once in a lifetime event. <laughs> the Obama campaign office on Charleston and Jones ran out of tickets late this afternoon. Tickets for Friday's Michelle Obama rally are already running out. Now I just took a look around the neighborhood traffic along Lake Mead near MLK still appears to be going smoothly. J Street is blocked off and the lines are getting long along Doolittle Avenue and that line right behind me here is also getting a little bit longer right here. Reporting live at Doolittle Park, Nathan Baca, 8 News Now. All right, Nathan, and West Las Vegas is welcoming President Obama with open arms. For years, crime has plagued that area, but Metro Police and the community are working to transform nearby neighborhoods, and they've made some progress. Hate News Now is live. Aaron Drawhorn is in West Las Vegas. So, Aaron, what's going on? Dave, President Obama has spoken before at high-end strip hotels, Nellis Air Force Base, even an East Las Vegas neighborhood that was struggling. But coming here to West Las Vegas is a first. It's an area that many people have long avoided, but the community is now having a chance to show its tremendous progress. Shaiwana Cole thought she made a huge mistake moving to West Las Vegas. That first night, gunshots outside my bedroom window. After so much progress, she now has pride in seeing a president visit her neighborhood. That just lets you know how a big change it came from around here because if it was two years ago, I would not think that he would even be over at that park. That change comes from Metro working with the community. Sherman Gardens, the public housing complex long considered dangerous and dilapidated, is kicking off a year-long makeover. Leaders also looked back on how bad things were. Uh, a lot of crime problems, you know, from our standpoint, uh, trust issues uh, with the police department and the community. Um, but, you know, we had a number of homicides over here, high level of uh, narcotics activity, gang activity. Sheriff Doug Gillespie says crime is on the decline, noting this groundbreaking is taking place the same day a president is speaking a street over at Doolittle Park. I think when people who live here um, have businesses here, uh, go to school here, uh, think back two years ago, if we would have said as a community these two things would be happening today here, uh, they would have questioned uh, your sanity. This wasn't a safe community. There's no way the President of the United States would be speaking here tonight. Mujahid Ramadan gladly welcomes VIPs and our community at large tonight to an improved West Las Vegas. It makes these people in these neighborhoods, makes our citizens in this community, immediate community, immediate neighborhood feel much better about themselves. When the L.A. riots took place in 1992, that also sparked some riots here in this community, causing danger, panic, and millions of dollars in damage. Tonight, with Secret Service descending all around this area, this arguably is the safest part of town, at least for the next few hours. We are live in West Las Vegas tonight. I'm Aaron Drawhorn. 8 News Now. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, the candidates are making Southern Nevada an important stop in these last few weeks of the election. Following Mitt Romney's visit and the president's, the first lady will be here Friday. Michelle Obama is holding what's being called a grassroots campaign rally at Orr Middle School. Doors open at 1130 with the event happening after 2 p.m. For tickets, go to 8newsnow.com, keyword Obama. And an important note about tonight's TV shows, we will be interrupting the programs, likely Criminal Minds, but don't worry, you'll still get to see every second of your favorite dramas. Following the president's speech, the show will pick right back up again, and CSI and the 11 p.m. news will be a bit delayed, but will eventually air in their entirety. If you re-record shows, you'll have to extend those recordings to be sure and get everything. Well, fresh off his campaign stop here in the Valley, Republican challenger Mitt Romney was energizing voters up in Reno. Thousands showed up to the rally at the Reno Event Center, where Mr. Romney attacked the president's health care plans that he says will change Medicare, saying many seniors will not be able to find a doctor willing to take new Medicare patients. He also went after the president's campaign slogan, Forward, saying many of the unemployed don't feel like the country has moved forward, but backward.
A lot of elections are important, but this, I believe, is a defining election. I say that because I think the choice that you make here in Nevada, and perhaps right here in Reno, will we'll make a difference for the nation, will we'll make a difference for the families of the nation, and will make a difference for your family. Romney is keeping busy on the campaign trail. He started his day in Denver before Reno and has a rally in Iowa tonight. And Romney's wife is in the battleground state of Florida today. She met with supporters in a pastry shop in Lakeland. Florida is a pivotal state, too, with both candidates heading back there this week. The president will hold a rally there tomorrow, and Romney has three stops in Florida Saturday. Smoke could be seen for miles this morning. It was coming from an empty building near Desert Inn and Valley View, a former bakery. That fire caused thousands of dollars in damage. Cassandra Garcia is live where it happened. Cassandra, any word yet on what might have caused that fire? Well, the fire department is still working to determine what caused the blaze. You may remember this building used to house the Normandy Bakery and closed down about five years ago. Tonight, most of the property has been boarded up like you see behind me. We did talk to the broker of this property earlier today. He says he has had problems in the past with squatters and believes that they may be to blame. Just before 6.30 this morning, the Las Vegas Fire Department responded to a massive fire near the intersection of Desert Inn and Valley View. The flames could be seen all over the valley. From Chopper 8, you can see just how strong the fire burned. Two-thirds of the roof had already collapsed when firefighters arrived, so they were forced to fight the fire from the outside. It took about 45 minutes to put out the flames. The cause of the fire is under investigation right now. One possibility is always uh, there could be transients or homeless people. They, they get in the buildings where we don't even know how they got in there. They have systems that are, are hidden. Um, they usually, they never intend for the buildings to catch fire. 8 News Now spoke to Kent Clifford, the broker of the property today. He was in the process of selling the 18,000 square foot building. Clifford says within the past year, he's had a problem with squatters and people breaking into the building. There was evidence inside that they had built fires in there before to keep warm. They had stolen all the copper out of the air conditioners. Then they uh, came in, I locked them out again, they broke back in. Derek Fletcher, who works down Sirius Street, says he's also noticed a lot of homeless people traveling through the area. And I think a lot of it has to do with the recycling yard that's right down the way. I mean, they take cardboard, they take pretty much anything. And even though many of the homeless take shelter in this area, it is still unclear how the fire began. Clifford says while the building may be standing, inside it is a total loss. And the damage is estimated at $500,000. The broker, along with now the potential buyer, says they have to determine what will be done with this building. Cassandra Garcia, 8 News Now. Thank you, Cassandra. Tens of millions of dollars for Nevada homeowners. What one bank is accused of doing to home buyers and the settlement money to help those in trouble now. And the search is on for a brazen casino thief. But why, despite his impressive take, is being called one of the dumbest crimes ever. The Vegas says Daily Deal at deals.8newsnow.com. Now, Nevada's first choice for news. This is Channel 8 News Now at 5. We're learning more about a man who died outside UMC last week. A source at the hospital tells 8 News Now, 43-year-old Jason King Forrester visited the emergency room last week, saying he'd been in some kind of car accident, possibly hitting a parked car. Forrester reportedly received a thorough medical checkup. The emergency room staff found nothing wrong and released him. Then the man returned a second time, reportedly seeking drugs, and was again checked out. The hospital source said the autopsy did not determine a cause of death. There were no signs of trauma or injury, and Forrester did not die of a heart attack. Tens of millions of dollars will soon go to help needy homeowners in Nevada. Attorney General Catherine Cortez Masto has announced the Royal Bank of Scotland has agreed to pay $42.5 million in a settlement with our state. The settlement ends in an 18-month investigation into the bank's ties to countrywide financial and option one, which were two of the most aggressive lenders during the housing boom. The bank is accused of funding more than $100 billion in risky loans. $36 million of the settlement will go to help distressed homeowners here in Nevada. The search is on for suspects in the latest casino heist. The thief got away, but his loot is likely to be worthless. It's one of the dumbest crimes you can possibly make. 
Police say 31-year-old acting guide Cole robbed the Venetian back on the 10th, getting away with $1.6 million in chips. But as we've seen in the past, casino chips are marked and can only be cashed at the casino where they were stolen. Even though people get away with some of this stuff sometimes initially, it's very, very difficult to take it through to conclusion. Police are hoping the clear surveillance pictures of Cole will bring him to justice quickly. Families struggling to make ends meet. Since my dad's the only one working, he we have a lot of trouble earning money. The innovative new program at one elementary school hoping to put parents back to work and the strip casino behind the idea. You're watching 8 News Now at 5 with Paula Francis and Dave Cavassier. The news for Southern Nevada is now. Tens of thousands of Valley residents are searching for jobs with our 11.5% unemployment rate. Now, a big casino company and an elementary school are teaming up, providing free job training to students' parents, eventually hiring them. Lauren Rosella is live near Walnut and Wyoming. Lauren. Here at Walter Long Elementary School, that job placement program is just in the beginning stages. But at a school where 85% of students qualify for free or reduced lunch, educators say this program is desperately needed. Walking single file at Walter Long Elementary School, all you hear is shouts and giggles. But not every student is carefree. Nine-year-old Jessica Gonzalez is one of the many kids affected by widespread unemployment across the Las Vegas Valley. Because my mom doesn't have a job, and I'm worried that since my dad's the only one working, he we'd have a lot of trouble earning money. Principal Joyce Brooks says From she sees more copy. parents without work, struggling to here. support students in her school. Our parents need work, and they saw a need, and they're here to help us. Caesars Foundation is stepping in to help Walter Long, not just putting a Band-Aid on the unemployment problem, but working to create a long-lasting solution, job training courses for parents. Build language skills, uh, job applications, uh, tutoring to help them. If they can't speak any English, they'll have interpreters in place. In a school where more than 60% of parents speak primarily Spanish, educators say breaking the language barrier is key for job placement. Parents already have access to language tools such as Rosetta Stone, and that will only be amped up with the job training classes. I think this is like an additional variable, of like a holistic view of what an education could be. The free job training for Walter Long will end up with a job placement and hiring fair in April, providing reassurance to many of the school's hundreds of students like Jessica. Thank you. <laughs> for helping my mom. The administrators here are still trying to work out exactly what kinds of positions that those will be, but they do say they will be working with Caesars Entertainment, probably providing positions related to the hotel industries with their properties. Now, the Caesars Foundation says they're just excited to help set the example for continuing education. We're now reporting live, Lauren Rosella, 8 News Now. What a cute yeah. little girl. Thanks, Lauren. Boy, you can tell the sun's setting. Hey, yeah. The day's getting shorter. It, yeah. suns, it sets before 6 o'clock now. And remember, on the 4th of November, it'll be daylight yeah. savings time. And then when that happens, uh, the clocks yeah. go back an hour. We gain some sleep. Uh, but by then, though, the <laughs> sun will be lucky. setting yeah, before 5 o'clock. So that's going to happen right. in about another uh, 10 days. So uh, there is a, a look outside this afternoon from our Caesars can. Speaking of Caesars, absolutely beautiful outside. It's nice to be able to say uh, for the second day in a row, temperatures are cooler than normal because uh, normal high this time of year should be right around 77 degrees. Uh, look at the high so far at only 71. So it was 73 yesterday, a little bit cooler today, and we have a couple more days of below normal temperatures, and then we'll start to warm things back up. So 71, the unofficial high so far. Look at these numbers outside. Again, nice out towards the Strip. Right now it's 69 degrees, uh, lots of 60s and lower 70s. East Domingo, you're at 72. Uh, Fort Apache, you're at 66. Seven Hills, you're at 70. A college of 95, you're in the upper 60s, uh, back towards the west here. Still cool there. You can see Silver Rats, you're at 71. And then outside the valley, it's still nice there. Searchlight, you're at 67, as well as Prump. 
Uh, Beatty, you're on the lower 60s and then you head up towards Mount Charleston. Look at that, nice and cool. The current temperature at 43 degrees. So the winds have really relaxed over the past 12 hours, but they're still in the forecast. I mean, I think tomorrow, if you're heading down towards Searchlight, maybe Laughlin, you're gonna have wind gusts up near 20 miles per hour. And you notice again on Friday, the colors return again because the cold front is taking its time, kind of pushing out of the area. The winds are really gonna be here again tomorrow and in through Friday, gusting up your uh, 20 miles per hour. So there's a look at the wind cats. So here's the reason why it's so cool outside. The jet stream dipped way down the south, but just a matter of time before the jet stream begins to head in the opposite direction, heads up towards a ridge, builds a ridge here, and that means milder temperatures will get here. So we'll be in the 60s or for a couple of days there, and then as we head towards the weekend, we'll start to warm things back up. There is a hurricane out there. Yesterday it was a tropical storm. Now it's a hurricane. Winds of 80 miles per hour. So again, traveling towards the Caribbean, maybe the Bahamas, maybe Cuba over the next couple days here. And now there are warnings for Florida because this is now a hurricane. So heading down towards Florida over the next couple days, make sure you call ahead because we're going to get some rain and some warnings there because of that the hurricane. We'll drop down to 49 tonight. It will be cool under mostly clear skies. And now tomorrow is uh, Thursday. Nice there, nice and cool. The high of 70. That's still 7 degrees below where we should be. And then there's a look at the 70 forecast. And you can keep it cool on Friday at 68. And then the ridge builds back in. So 75 on Saturday. And as we head towards next week, we'll get back to where we should be with some nice weather. Highs up near 80 degrees. There you go. Dave, back to you. Thanks, Darren. Well, paying it forward in today's acts of kindness. The personal connection that brought this man to Rancho High School to help homeless students there. Sure, Las Vegas may be known for the glitz and glamour of the Strip, but it's the kindness of those who call this place home that shines brighter than the neon. And in today's Acts of Kindness, Shana Karami shows us one man who is willing to invest in the Valley's next generation. The purpose of these stories is to share with you, our viewers, people in our community who are doing great things and giving back. And we here at Channel 8 want to honor these inspirational and exceptional people by paying it forward. And the key phrase here is pay it forward. A local man by the name of Bob Ellis saw our segment on Angela Orkiaga and contacted us because he wanted to help her cause. Now, Angela, you might remember her. She works at Rancho High School, but she's also the homeless student's advocate there. Let's watch as Bob gives her an unexpected surprise. We have a, we have a little surprise for you. Yeah, just a little surprise. Come on in, Bob. Come on in. How are you? You. Pleasure. How about oh, you? How fun. Thank you. Great. And who is Bob? Oh, oh my God. Oh, I was going to tell you who he is. Well, I uh, believe it or not, I graduated from Rancho High School many, many years ago, 1960. Ooh. And I, oh, what a beautiful community service this Acts of Kindness is. Uh, because of Shauna here, I seen it and I says, I've got to help that person. Ooh. So it's not me that's a hero that's giving the money to you or something like that. It's you. So me and my wife have a check for you for uh, the work you're doing for $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me hug you real hard. <laughs> uh, what you do for these kids is just... And I have to tell you, watching someone want to give back because they saw one of our Acts of Kindness segments was an, a very special moment for me. There are 103 homeless children at Rancho High School, and Angela provides all of them with food, clothing, and school supplies through her own earnings, as well as donations from others. She told us that this $5,000 came just in time to buy new shoes and jackets for all the homeless kids for the holidays. Shauna Karami, 8 News Now. A great story. And if you have someone you want to nominate, we'd like to hear from you. Visit our website at 8newsnow.com and just click on the Acts of Kindness tab. And you can always email us, too, directly at actsofkindness at 8newsnow.com. We'll be right back. Coming up tonight at 6, emergency crews race to McCarran International Airport. Now, it's just a practice, but how this very real drill is being used to save lives. Plus, fighting genocide, a local company hoping to bring awareness to a global crisis. CBS Evening News is coming up next. Thanks for watching 8 News Now at 5. You can always catch our podcast on iTunes. We'll see you again at 6.